Now, I think the irons category is perhaps the most competitive it's ever been. The choice is phenomenal right now. And often what a manufacturer will do, they categorize their irons based on handicap. Very much pigeonhole you into the choice or the type of choice you're supposed to make. I'm going to show you an iron which I think changes all that and probably appeals to the broadest mainstream of golfers out there. Right, so here's something to think about before we go any further. The average handicap, male handicap that is, is around 16. And if you're a 16 handicapper, generally what you're going to want from your irons, well, you'll be pigeonholed anyway by a manufacturer into saying you want, uh, you, well, you want plenty of forgiveness, you want fast ball speeds across the club face, Generally, strong lofted iron is going to be a thing. You're going to want help all around in terms of performance. Now, to do that, you're going to generally have to make a bit of a compromise in the fact that you'll be offered an iron that is quite bulky in its appearance, um, often lacks a little bit of finesse in terms of its styling, and the colorways can, well, it can be a bit garish to say the least. The iron I'm about to show you, I reckon, could change all that, you know. It doesn't sound too bad either. So let me just put that into perspective for a minute. The average handicapped golfer, or the masses if you like, that play the game, they have to play the worst looking clubs and the better players get to play the better looking clubs. That can't be fair, can it? So before we go any further, let me introduce you to the new Stealth Iron from Taylor May, which I reckon could be their surprise package in this whole Stealth range. It's really surprised me on a number of different levels. But like I said, you take a look at it and tell me what you think of it first. So you've taken a look at the iron and you can draw your own conclusions in terms of visuals but for me i certainly think that you always buy with your eyes first of all you're drawn to a club and as i've just explained if you're in that super game improvement category then you're often looking at big clumbersome bulky products now what they've done with the stealth it is got a little bit of mass around it and it's got that kind of mass and bulk that's going to give you the confidence that you're going to want at that level but it's not been overdone it doesn't seem oversized and if it is then they've certainly done a very clever way of disguising that if you like in terms of the coloring the back side of it looks to me in terms of shelf appeal one of the best looking if not the best looking super game improvement out there monochrome and it's finished all kind of stripped back in terms of the decals in terms of the lettering very much in the kind of player's profile if you like visually and i think for me many of us golfers shy away from putting this kind of iron in the bag in the past because of the way it looks well i think you'd be pretty proud to have them in your bag but not only the way it looks clearly these things have got to perform what I'm going to show you next is a very short video explaining what technology is packed into the irons. And I think this is pretty impressive as well. Now for the loft police amongst you, then yes, you are going to be offended because this is, as you'd expect, strongly lofted iron, seven iron at a shocking 28 degrees. Yes, starting to comments now and get offended by it. It doesn't bother me, the loft thing. I mean, you can call it a six iron, 
call it a five iron, call it whatever you want, it doesn't bother me. You just pick a club out the bag that goes a yardage that you hit, what loft is on it and how it gets from A to B is irrelevant to me. And if people play with golfers who sort of want to brag because they use the seven iron but it's 28 degrees and yours is 34 degrees, then well, don't play golf with them anymore. The point is, people, golfers rather, average golfers, they need a bit of help. This package of 28 degrees with a CG placed in the position that it is due to what we talked about earlier, this ball launches into orbit. It doesn't travel necessarily the distances it should do in theory because it's 28 degrees. My average carry on this is around sort of 170. My 32 degree iron at seven iron, if that's what you want to call it, I currently game, is probably around 163, 164. So the yardage compared to loft is irrelevant to me. The point is this club gets from A to B in a certain way and it launches the ball incredibly high. In terms of sound and feel, I was a big fan of the Sim 2 last year in terms of what they do because yet again, you've seen in the video if you watched it carefully, forge like feel. No, I don't agree with that. This isn't forge like feel, but what they've done yet again is made a super game improvement iron feel really good, sound really good. So again, it does all the things that you want to do as a, or what you'd expect to get out of a player's iron into a game improvement iron. But the other difference is this, I'm gonna put these two visuals up for you now. I've got alongside this club, I'll make sure, so yeah, I thought it was the Max then. It looks that much bigger. This is the Sim 2 from last year from uh, TaylorMade. And if you look at the overall profile, not just the top line looks incredibly um, narrower, if you like, but also that heel to toe distance overall profile of the club has been made more, much more compact. So yet again, all this focuses around for me is just making a far more appealing iron for the masses, those average golfers, those 16 handicappers that are out there. If you want a game improvement club in your bag, you've now got the opportunity to put something in there that sounds good, looks incredibly good, and you're proud to have it in your bag. Right, onto dry ball data. But there is no dry ball data, and there's a reason for that, and it's because it tells us exactly what we'd expect to see. I've hit a few shots in here on the simulator into this par three, and you'll see from those that the carry was what I was suggesting, only with seven iron, that is 170-ish carry plus. Spin number, very reasonable for the type of uh, strength of loft of iron. But the big thing with this is it's not about spin, and it's not about carry, it's about whether or not you're gonna stop on a green is down to launch, and descent angle and they're the big things you can see these things are coming down with uh, snow on them quite literally and uh, again I, I can't sort of keep on driving home the same thing it's not something that concerns me in terms of spin on these type of irons when they're launching and the descent angle is as steep as it is these are going to hold greens you're not going to worry about that and yet again to be honest with you when you're looking for these type of irons this is the category that you put yourself in it's the least of your worries about holding a green. It's how you get there is the problem. And these will certainly help. Well, a summary is gonna be a fairly quick one because I've pretty much said everything in the review so far of what I think of these irons. But I said in the title of the video, forget the stealth driver. And uh, well, again, bit tongue in cheek, not necessarily forget the driver, but there are other products within this range which I think are really, really special. And the first one we've come to is the irons. And as I've stated, I just think the really appeal to a broad section of golfers and I don't care what level you play at these could appeal to a fairly low handicapper and a high handicapper but the big deal for me is they perform incredibly well but then look really good as well so they're not the kind of look that you generally have associated to this type of iron so for me a massive thumbs up to Taylor made in creating something that's really appealing on the eye that is uh, available to those higher handicap golfers something that we're not used to getting but more importantly, like I said, in all these videos, that's only my opinion. What do you think of the Stealth Irons? Are they as good looking as I'm making out or is it just something that appeals to me on a personal note? As ever, comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. And if you're looking for irons this year, are these gonna be on your list? Right, thanks as ever for watching. I'll see you all very soon in the review itself. I said in the title of this video that uh, the kind of, what was I saying in the title of the video? <laughs> Forget the Stealth Driver. Forget the Stealth Driver, yeah. Mm.